We are back at it with the G106 today and I've got my iFixit toolkit with me. So that means it's teardown time. Let's get into this thing here and see what we can, and see what kind of mischief we can make. I'm not even really 100% sure how I'm gonna get into this thing because there are screws everywhere. Okay, so these are two millimeters. I'm gonna try taking the side panel off first. These screws seem to join the side panel all at once. And there's my, my warranty void if removed sticker. Let's see if we can open this thing up without removing the, the warranty void sticker. I have been told these things don't make much difference. They're just to keep the, the people out, keep them scared. This two millimeter is probably not big enough or it might be an SAE size, which would be weird. But it's what we got and these things aren't over torqued, so I'm working with it. These hex keys, they should be very snug when you insert them into the screw heads. Okay, this is gonna be fun to get into. Yep, so the two on each side have been removed and it's still not flexing any, but there are also two on the front and two on the back. And the one on the front is hidden by the VFO knob. So, oh, those are different size screws. So short screws go in the back. Let's see if the front screws are the same size. Yep, these are longer. Yep, and then much longer screw in the front there. Can I get, let's get my tool out. Okay, so this is a solid piece of metal here. And what I'm gonna do is just pry up on it a little bit. Oh, it's moving easy, okay. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit each time I pry so I'm getting some relatively even pressure on the knob. Okay, that's actually, that's pretty heavy. I'm digging that, that's nice. Okay, is this screw the same size as the screw on the other side? Yes, it is. Okay, so the front screws are different than the back screws are different than the side screws. And if nothing's given yet, let's keep going. Okay, top screws and back screws appear to be the same size. Well, the ones with the feet are gonna be easy to keep track of so far. All right, now the front's coming loose. All right, not bad. That's what I expected out of that. There's a bunch of uh, ribbon cables connecting the front. Let's continue down the back path. I would imagine these two screws hold the speaker in and I'm not sure about those two yet. Okay, so these screws here, Phillips head screws, I'm gonna guess those are number ones, are holding these buttons on, which is actually a good idea. Oh, they're smaller than ones. Let's try zeros. There we go. Those are zeros. And now we can get in without removing the warranty void sticker. It's still on there. Okay, so what are we looking at? Let's get this back up into frame for you. What are we looking at here? So this is that button switch panel that I was telling you about that screws into the top plate to make sure it doesn't come out. It's the G106 top keypad version 1.0. Is this a lift up? This is a pull out. Yeah, that's probably a pull out friction connector, but I don't need to pull it out just yet. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, so we have relays and toroids, and we have a bunch of transistors on heat sinks, RD16HHF, one, I think is what that is. And then these are L7809 CV, 7809. So those are nine volt DC regulators. Yeah, it's a 7809 and that's a 7805. So there's your five volt and nine volt and they're connected up to the ground plane. This says G106 base version 1.0. There's not a lot of labeling on here. Is there anything? on there worth taking a farther apart on this side before we flip it over. Yeah, if I take this if I take this circuit board off, I'm removing all of the heat sink paste and I don't see Oh, there goes my sticker. My warranty is now void, so we can remove the speaker. I don't see anything mounted on the bottom side of this circuit board, so we're going to leave that as it is and now we have some more degrees of freedom. There is no labeling around here. And since this doesn't have a tuner built in, I'm going to assume that that is the bandpass filter, and this is your coax coming out. And then this coax here runs down to the underside of the radio. So let's 
get this thing flipped over and take a look at the underside of the radio. I'm going to be careful with this switch plate here. Take the rear feet off, switch back my screwdriver head. All right, bottom plate comes off very easy. Nothing on the bottom plate. G106 SSIG version 1.0 on the bottom side. So right here we have an ARM STM32 processor. There's a, a big arrow pointing right there. And that's where that coax goes from the front board to the back board. There's another coax connector right there. All right, so here we have the STM32 processor, the brains of the organization here. These two Texas Instruments chips here are CU257, another Texas Instruments chip 21A9CK is what that looks like to me. I need to get a better magnifying glass. Yeah, 21A93CK. So this board here drives your accessories. Where's your key here? And your key and your COM port? Yes. Your key and your COM port come off of this board as well. So your CW keyer circuitry should be on here. Your USB, well, your serial data transfer circuitry should be on here. Very interesting. Let's take it back onto the top side. It's almost easier to see that without the magnifying glass. Looks like it says 222AA-G. Really hard to read. Anything on the front panel? Nah, just controls and a screen. But the screen driver board looks like a custom Zygu unit. Zygu keeps putting heat sinks down the center of their radios. So this, the, there is an aluminum plate in the middle that's gonna be your heat sink. And then that heat sink plate connects to the external case. So you will be able to get some heat transfer from the inside to the outside. So it's, it's not a bad design. I kind of wish there was some air intake, but air intake means dust intake, but this thing doesn't have a sealed up case anyway. So there's a walk around the inside of the radio for you. Hopefully that satisfies some curiosity for you. Let's get it put back together now. It's gonna be interesting to get this switch plate back on the front. Good as new, nobody will know. Actually, they can tell because of the way the sticker was designed. It's a tamper-evident sticker, and it is evident that I have tampered with it. That screw is not happy. So what I'm doing is I'm just loosening these screws up a little bit to see if I can get some clearance to make this screw here happier. There we go, yep. And sometimes you need to do that when you're putting things back together. Another trick that I'm doing is I'm turning it backwards a bit until you hear that click. And that gets your thread seated up just the way they used to be. And then I can drive it home without cross-threading it. And that's what I was trying to prevent on that last screw was cross-threading. These are machine screws, so they should go in fairly easy every single time. And you're screwing into an aluminum base, so it would probably be very easy to cross-thread those things. And then the last two screws are the long screws that go in the front. This faceplate gets a lot of fingerprints on it. Okay, moment of truth. Let's turn the power supply on. Let's grab our power cable. There she is. Excellent. Okay, folks, that's the G106 inside and out. And I'm thinking that it's getting closer and closer to its price tag every day. It was very, very quality, very quality. I don't think you can say that. It was quality construction on the inside. Uh, the VFO knob was nice and solid. The heatsink plate was probably way larger than it needs to be. I don't think heating and cooling is gonna be an issue inside of the radio. Again, it does the thing, and I'm getting closer and closer to that $300 price tag being okay. So let's see what they can do with some firmware updates in the future. I see a lot of potential in firmware because there's a lot of things that are software driven in modern radios that it would be really easy to fix. There is a discount code in the description down below where you can get $15 off of this radio and help support the channel. And there's a video right over there I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll be over there waiting for you.